heard from others or even experienced it yourself that at certain nights that when you sleep you would like your room to be a little lit up probably you would say um, leave the, the the bathroom door a tad open so that the light can come in or i need my room light to be on because if it gets dark i get a little uncomfortable is there someone standing over there at the corner or oh, is this just just a shadow of the lamp post outside you start having all those thoughts but when you have that little light you feel safe right Today's gospel, my dear friends, is very short. It's taken from Luke chapter eight, verses sixteen to eighteen. Although it is short, it bears a lot of meaning. Now, in this passage, Jesus is basically instructing his disciples that a light, the purpose of a light, is to illumine the room which it is placed in. So, if you want the room to be lit up well, you need to put this lamp on a place so that the lamp can illumine the whole room. You do not hide it somewhere lower. Right, you put it higher so that the whole room gets the light, and it's a pretty straightforward, right? People will be like, "Duh," but it bears a lot of meaning, my dear friends. Now, if you look back at history, dear friends, light was a crucial symbol in the Jewish worldview. Just as the Greek culture prized knowledge, or the Roman culture valued glory, right? Or modern American culture proclaims freedom. The Hebrews' culture. Ideal standard was light. Now, if we go back to basics, if I would ask you, what is the purpose of a light? What is the purpose of a lamp? Right. Now, you know, growing up, we had all these stereotypes at home that you shouldn't cut your hair at night or cut your fingernails or toenails at night because um, bad luck or it may welcome, you know, it, it will take away the luck of the family or it may it bring about the evil one. Right. But There was a certain logic behind it. The logic was basically, if you if you do those actions at night or when the sun sets, you may have the tendency or the chances of injuring yourself, right? So the lamp basically enables someone to see or work in the dark, to prevent any form of injury or accidental falling or making any mistakes, right? So if that's the case, the question to you is: Do you consider God as your light? If so, how are you manifesting this light in your life? Now, my friends, the reality is we all need to see the light, and there are two ways to it. It's either we see the light of Christ from others when they share the light of Christ with us through the words or through their actions, or number two, it is on our part to share the light of Christ with others so that others are able to come to Christ through us. Right, and it is very clear from the passage that we need to enkindle this light of Christ in us, so that the rest of the world, people around us, will be able to see the light of Christ in us and through us. Because Jesus clearly says, "No one who lights a lamp conceals it." Right? You would want the room to be well lit up. Same goes to us too. Now, in other words, if you are not shining the light of Christ. It is not because you are trying to hide him, but it's because he is not burning in your soul. When he is actually burning in your soul, the light cannot be contained, my friends. Now let's talk facts, my friends. The dark is getting darker, and the light is getting lighter in today's world. These very times are the times that it should ignite our soul, ignite the light of Christ in our soul for the conversion of souls. especially our loved ones and ourselves we should have this sense of urgency to do whatever it takes to bring souls lost souls forgotten souls to jesus to christ and back to the church now more than ever my friends we must be bold we have to let go our attraction to the worldly things and bring people to the authentic christianity that christ promotes So how can we be the light in today's darkness my friends? In today's sharing I'll be sharing three points on how we can do so. How we can assist you to be the light to others. Now the first thing to remember friends is your witness matters. Now if you see John 13:15 Jesus says, "I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you may do do so too." Now as the saying goes, Action speaks louder than words, right? 
And St. Francis of Assisi actually also seconds this when he says, Preach the gospel always and when necessary, use words. So what they're trying to say is, we should promote Christ, we should be authentic Christians through our actions, right? How we act, especially those who are closest to us, is critical in, in evangelizing to others. Now, if you see your heart of an authentic Christian, all around it are full, are filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that you will be able to resonate this in their own words and in their actions. Now, perhaps, my friends, you may struggle with anger, frustration, profanity, or other worldly behaviors that the world promotes. And sometimes, you know, we have friends around us, and when we hear them having conversations with one another, and if they're having a conversation with a Catholic, they might say, wow, you are a devout Catholic, yet you talk like that, you know? So it's already a establishment to them that it is not the way of Christ. So how are we promoting our faith through our words and through our actions? Or perhaps, you know, sometimes you come back from, from church, right, after Mass, and you, you turn on the TV, and then you see something which is really bad on the news and all, and you start cursing, and you, you get so angry. And your mom or your dad says to you, Did it, didn't you just come back from church? I think you should go back again, right? So yes, my friends, we fall. But we have to get over ourselves and ask for the humility that God can give us. We need God's help in these moments. Because remember, your witness matters. So second, my friends, seek first the kingdom of God. Now, if you look back to the Gospels of Matthew 6, verses 33 to 34, it says that, Seek first the kingdom of God in all its righteousness. Do not worry about tomorrow. Today is sufficient. The evils of today is sufficient for today. Do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. So to understand this, my friends, to truly love one another as He loves us, we need to spend time with God. Three steps. We should start our day with prayer. We should offer ourselves to God throughout the day and call on Him when we are tempted throughout the day. You know, let's go back to last Christmas. So we were sitting as a family and I was, we were just sipping wine while having a wonderful conversation as a family. And I was about to take my third glass of wine, right? Now, as I was about to pour, I was telling Lord, I know that this third glass of wine might cause me to see or do things beyond my control and things that I may regret because I may have less reasoning skills. I believe that I may be tempted by my own desires or by the evil speaking to me through that third glass of wine. So because I love you, because I love the people around me, I'm going to put this third glass away for now. So, have conversations with the Lord. You know, when you're tempted to do anything, right? When you're tempted to fall into sin, have these conversations with God. And even if you fall, you knew that you had a conversation with the Lord. You had an attempt with the Lord to stop you from sinning. And I'm sure, my friends, if people around you can see this vulnerability and your dependence on God, I'm sure that this light of Christ will radiate to others too. Now the third way on how we can be the light in today's darkness is by going into the New Testament, going into sin, uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians. And if you look at Philippians 4, 6, St. Paul writes, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Have no anxiety at all. Yes, my friends, we are called to fast, we are called to pray, and we are called to make reparations for the world and for our own souls. So the next time you fast, the next time you pray, think about these three things. Offer our fast, offer our prayer up for the love of God, for the forgiveness of sinners of the world, and the reparation of offenses to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, as what Our Lady of Fatima asked us to pray for. So my friends, the time is not Next week is not tomorrow, the time is now. The time is now. The spiritual battle, my friends, is manifesting in ways that I've not seen ever in my lifetime. And I'm sure those who are elder than me would say so too. We all need to be through disciples of Jesus and the Catholic faith. And remember, it starts with our own transformation. And these three steps of how we can be the light to others 
in today's darkness can help you in preparation for it. So let's continue, my friends, to improve our inner lives. We shall start today, right? So I invite you to reflect today. As God asks us to be the light of Christ to others too, we think about the people around us. Have they experienced Christ through us, through the light that we share to others? And if we have not been able to answer this question, probably let's look back at our lives, let's rekindle the light of Christ in ourselves before we are able to share it with others. Let us pray. Lord, to be a Christian today is indeed very challenging. In times of struggle, I am tempted to hide my light, to remain anonymous at times, to be silent out of shame. Lord, when the wick of my lamp flickers and fades, strengthen its beams and let me be again a light bearer to all around us, a beacon of hope to all whom I daily encounter. All of this we ask in the precious name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. God bless.